So welcome, welcome to uh, Women in Leadership. This is uh, the second uh, of the um, sort of seminar series that we're holding with a live panel expert. So I'm super, super excited. Uh, let me right dive in because we've got so much um, stuff to cover. We have um, obviously all the panel experts here and if you have any questions, please make sure you just uh, drop them into the chat box. Obviously there's also options later on to ask the panel uh, specific questions too. Um, so after every topic say, uh, so you, but you don't have to wait so you can just sort of um, drop your, your questions in the chat and then we'll get to them uh, later on. Okay, so I'm just going to do a bit of an introduction and sort of set up um, the whole framework, let you know what we're going to cover today. And of course, I need to introduce myself as well as a host. So first and foremost, this is a free interactive online workshop. It is entitled Back to School and Back to Work. And this is all about claiming your power and becoming the leader that you are meant to be. Um, I am super, super passionate about women in leadership, as you can, uh, you know, kind of um, no, as, as you can see from my body language and you know the way I talk about it um, but you know what I am not very much of a fan of sort of women coming together and sort of staying in a bubble I believe that we need to actually include the men as well so any men that are watching this or are here today I'd love to you know really really welcome it's for you absolutely as well because I really want to kind of um, foster this environment and changing exchanging best practices maybe even exchanging some awareness and I had lots and lots of amazing um, conversations with men about this, this topic as well. So absolutely, they have this uh, space here as well to kind of make this, I guess I can't say the whole world the better place, but let's say, let's make this a better place in terms of the relationship when it comes to working together. Now, what we're gonna be um, discussing today in particular is about the six powerful ways to rejuvenate and kickstart your autumn. So you're able to, you know, if you have a family, support your family, you wanna be empowered at work and you wanna nurture yourself. And I specifically thought about this topic because I have children, so my kids have just gone back to school and it feels like, oh no, I want to be kind of having some more holidays and sort of time off. And it kind of feels a bit hard and perhaps to get back into the swing of things. And I thought it may be really nice to actually host a, a sort of a seminar a, around that and sort of help you get into the swing of things and really give you some golden nuggets that you can take away and apply okay so that is the key so take your notebook and and write write your your notes as we go along okay so you will obviously meet the six panel experts not just listening to my voice all the time um, because you will have different views different kind of topics um, and that will really help help you obviously kickstart the autumn and uh, with the autumn as well it is the last quarter of the year so it's about having a really strong end um, of, of this year um, because quite often we can kind of slip into that sort of yeah I'll start again whatever you want to start like even a diet right I want to start in January so no let's start now in September and make the last couple of months the best uh, of this year okay so let me introduce myself. I am Sabine Mathar. Of course, I'm the host of the Virtual Women Leadership Summit 2019. I'm also the founder of the Empowerment Portal, and we'll talk a little bit more about both of these aspects in a minute. Now, what's with my background? Why am I here talking about this? I mean, yes, I am absolutely passionate about women in leadership myself. I have been working in as a woman in leadership for many, many years too. Um, as a consultant in larger organizations, smaller organization, I'm also running my own business, helping women start and grow their businesses as well. So I've actually kind of a fair amount of, um, I guess, a fair amount of expertise and, and sort of um, a fair amount of experiences myself. And not all experiences were were that great right some of them were um you know quite quite tough because i was working in manufacturing male dominated environment so there was quite a lot of challenges um throughout um but yeah the passion has come through in terms of um what i want to do and how i want to make an impact in the world and i want to bring people together and yes i have seen someone raising your hands and maybe if one of the, um, the, the panel experts, uh, the co-hosts could just um, tend to that, that would be amazing. I won't be able to take any questions right now, but I'm happy to open up a little bit later. Um, 
so yeah, I've created actually Reach for Greatness, which is my brand, which is my uh, company. And I work with entrepreneurs on one side, helping them start and grow their businesses. But on the other side, I also work with professionals, with organizations to help them basically, um, um, well, I guess, improve in a way and sort of help develop and empower their key people. Because it's super important that when you as an organization empower your key people, you know, these are your assets. And with that, you can perform with that. You can improve um, whatever you want to improve, like efficiencies. You want to be in the uh, innovative you want to um, create that asset and you want to make sure your people are at the heart of your strategy um, but also I you know I really welcome also individuals to come along and, and this is the beauty about this uh, the women in leadership and also the portal which I'm going to be talking about a bit later uh, through the, the webinar it's it's open for individuals too so no one has to actually wait and sort of been told by your boss say to you know go on this course you know if you want to be empowered if you want to move forward if you want to take the next level wherever you are whether you are a leader or you're an emerging leader then you know this is the place to be so a come and and sort of network with us b there is also an opportunity to be working with us uh, and i'll open up that opportunity for you to have a look at that a bit later so what happened next? So obviously last year I already was hosting uh, many of these webinars, um, smaller summits, and I hosted over 150 kind of women uh, just 2018. So this is where it's all come about. It's kind of in my DNA. I love doing this kind of stuff. Um, what happened as part of the whole, um, I guess, I had a vision, it was last year, I had a vision. One morning I woke up and I had this idea to go and write a book with a hundred women. And I wanted to inspire the world. I wanted to share stories. So this is where it all started. And I show you in the next slide what happened. Now this is what happened seven months after. I didn't really know how I'm gonna write a book because I've never written a book. And English is not my native language. I'm originally from Austria. But, you know, the book uh, has been born and it has, you know, really changed um, not only myself, I've been on this growth journey myself to kind of push through my boundaries and sort of grow into areas which I've never really um, kind of explored in the past, but also I was able to touch other women. And as you can see here, I was invited once I launched the book, you know, we were international bestsellers and, um, you know, companies started to reach out to me and they asked me, can you come and do a lunchtime talk? Can you come and inspire our women? in business and this is where it all started so I started with the lunchtime talks and it was really beautiful to see all these amazing women you know sort of literally cram cramming into that one small sort of boardroom that was the first talk i did and more and more and more came in and then afterwards you know they asked me a couple of questions about you know yeah it's all good and well i can read your book but then how can i really be empowered how can i keep this up how can i move to the next level and i really thought to myself hang on you know i am an entrepreneur myself i know so many amazing women you know and then the idea came to actually collate all these experts and start the women in leadership summit not only that but then also from that we we created the empowerment portal which is an online platform for training and development and community so that's me sort of a bit in a nutshell um what else did i want to say about this so yeah i mean the first steps re was really to create the women in leadership um a kind of movement and then the next step is to create the portal now all of the ladies who are here today are actually part of the of the portal they are contributors so you know i'm super honored and i'm so um, happy that i have so much support around me and and you know when other women that are actually sharing the same vision um so obviously my my company is called reach for greatness and i just want to leave you with with this before i open to the panel for me, reaching for greatness in life is really to remind ourselves of our own purpose and to stepping into the unknown and taking on the challenges and risks, which I call empowerment. 
so digest this a little bit. So it kind of really reflects my journey of stepping into the unknown, writing books, and then getting, you know, so many doors have opened up and so many ideas have flown. So I would have never thought that was possible. So it may be something that can happen to you too. And this is what we're going to talk about, you know. How can we as women in business and in leadership achieve this too? So let me um, just position, like, you know, let you know who the panel is. Actually, you know, as I said, um, they are all um, part of the collaboration, the, the empowerment portal. They are contributors, they're experts. You know, when people join the portal, they actually get access, real access to, uh, to experts, you know, calls with experts, one-to-one -one time, as well as a whole load of uh, online resources for self-study. So it's a hybrid, so it's, it's both. So each of the panel experts are going to talk to you about, like, give you a bit of an insight in terms of what they do and how they can help you kickstart autumn. So they each have a different topic. Um, so I'd invite you as listeners to make notes and, you know, fire away questions every, um, so after the, each of the panel experts have had the little talk, we'll be uh, able to answer your questions. So let's um, start with Carol. I'm just gonna swap videos. Um, Carol um, is a business coach for entrepreneurs with ADHD, and she's also a certified coach with 18 years of experience in the design profession as a project manager. And since 2009, she helps those with ADHD to get out of their own way to manifest the business and the life they deserve with ease. And today she's really going to talk about how successful professional women start their morning. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna kind of toggle around and I'm gonna get Carol onto the screen as well. So I'm gonna stop sharing my slides for a bit. And Carol is here, so I'm just gonna, hopefully that works to kind of, um, get you a little bit larger onto the screen. So you can just start talking whilst I'm trying okay. to figure All right. it out. Well, <laughs> well I, for, I'm so excited to be here. You know, here we are, we're in September, you know, turn the calendar, it feels a little fresher outside. And, um, you know, like, thank you, Sabine, great introduction. Uh, gosh, there's so much to say, you know, and I've only got four minutes. So I thought what I would do is I would uh, just say out loud, that my contribution to the portal is all about overcoming obstacles to lead yourself first. Sometimes our obstacles come in little bite-sized pieces. So today's topic is all about back to school, back to autumn. And what I would say is starting your morning, whether you're a man or a woman, it doesn't really matter. When you're leading yourself, and when you are uh, leading your family, what you want to do, I find, is really start the night before. So, so having a great morning begins the night before. There are three things that I'd love for you to take away starting the night before. And while these may not sound that like, of course, like, you know, of course, but, but do you do them? Because if you don't do them, it doesn't matter how much you know right? <laughs> so the night before it really starts. Um, and what you want to do is you want to have that phone free hour. One hour, I would say before you actually go to bed, just don't even have your phone phone with you. Don't even like watch if you watch television, don't do that. Really have that, you know, wind down time. Maybe you're reading a book. Maybe one of the things that people do that have a lot going on, and most of the people I work with have a lot going on, is they write their to-do list that night before to get it out of their brains and onto electronic paper or regular paper. Why? Have you ever woken up at three in the morning and gone, oh my gosh, I forgot about that? Hello, that's why. So it's very important. Another couple of things, um, kind of two things, is movement and meditation. So in the morning, uh, or at night, you know, meditating at night. Oh my gosh, what a great way to go to sleep, right? Listening to that meditation, mm -hmm. you know, not, you know, if it's on your phone, like that's where it gets tricky, but really and truly listening to that meditation puts you to sleep really nicely. And then waking up to some movement, whether it's yoga, stretching, walking, going to the gym, whatever it is, mo uh, movement and meditation, very important. And I got a bonus thing for you as well. And that is back to school, right? 
So I realized that many people on this phone call are, are in UK, Europe, whatever it is. Um, and obviously I'm not because I'm pretty American if you listen to me. Well, we have a lot of paper that comes home with our children. What I do is I plan on it. I call it the mom homework. It could be the dad homework. And there's all these things that you have to go through and return and you know whatever it is. If you can like know that that's gonna happen ahead of time and really plan for it, that's good. And, then, and one more thing is like, make sure you take some time, dedicated time to now take all the activities, sports, open house nights, uh, go rent the band equipment, whatever it is, and make sure you know that that's coming in. So, so to put it in your calendar and know it. The worst thing you can have can do is say, "Oh, it's going to be business as usual," and then all this stuff sort of crashes in at you. I'm sure I'm gone at least to four minutes, so I will uh, say thank you very much and uh, uh, leave it back to you, Sabine. However, you want to handle it. No, that's awesome. No. I'm yeah, it's exactly four minutes. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you. Questions for uh, Carol before we move on. Uh, let me just go back. So it's uh, lost the chat now. So brilliant, Carol. Uh, yeah. Good. Uh, and I, I was just thinking about, yeah, all the papers that are coming, coming in uh, on day one, <laughs> all the things you need to organize. And yeah, it's so much to do as well. And especially if you're handling, you know, children, a job and, and maybe even a business or and husbands and, and or wives you know yeah there's so many different things and and uh, quite often I do wake up and I was like oh I forgot about that and and then I have nothing to write <laughs> so, <laughs> pen and paper is probably the best thing yeah I agree okay, okay. perfect so uh, let me I think I'll kind of share my screen again to introduce the next expert so we'll be with uh, Lynn actually Lynn I could I could just get you on the screen here Lynn Smith is the queen of hearts love dating relationship a transformational expert based upon Lynn's personal research and training with the world's leading industry experts along with her decades of vast experience experiment experiential learning she runs how to use your feminine power relationship workshops in the uk and retreats in spain which is amazing so today it's all about how to use your feminine power we have a gentleman too so maybe lynn i know you also work with men so we can maybe make it a bit unisex yeah um, <laughs> thank you very very much sabine and thank you all of you that are on the call uh, whether you're listening live or on the replay i'm very very grateful as i'm sure that everybody here is very grateful that you're here and spending your time listening to what we've got to say um i must apologize that i've got my uh, beloved paul <laughs> his name under my picture at the moment and um the reason for that is that my computer literally crashed the literally minutes before i was due to come on live so apologies for that i had to quickly set up his pc and get on his so um yeah how to use your feminine power well it really boils down to um when you are looking to attract or create great relationships first and foremost to actually embark upon that and, and really have the relationship you truly deserve the work that needs to be done before that happens is having a great relationship with yourself and we're not educated or parented around relationships are we and unfortunately that quite often leads down the line to divorce um uh, at worst it can lead to domestic violence relate type toxic relationships and you know sometimes on the back of having poor relationships you know we can even end up having issues of ill health that can lead to even suicidal thoughts and that isn't what obviously is best in terms of how we want to show up for work is having that awful home life or that awful loneliness where you haven't even got a relationship so to change our relationship status it's all about learning to have a great relationship with yourself so 
what's a good tip or insight around having a great relationship with, with yourself? First and foremost, it's that, that awareness. What self-talk is going on in your head? You know, what are you telling yourself on a daily basis about how you are? You know, are you actually saying to yourself you're not good enough? Or I always have crap relationships, or I haven't got a great figure, or no men want successful women. What is your self-talk to yourself? And also, when you look at yourself in the mirror, how kind are you? Do you look in the mirror and think, yeah, I'm looking great, I'm looking fab, I'm looking wonderful, I really acknowledge that magnificent woman that's staring back at me. Or are you saying, oh my God, I've got another wrinkle here, I look hideous, I've put on two pounds. You know what? It's those sorts of things that are all reflected back at us in our daily lives, including our healthy relationships or not, as the case may be. So when it comes to educating women about how to use their feminine power, before we even get onto that, I want to see where they're currently at in terms of what relationship do you have with yourself? I don't know whether that's gone for four minutes, it's Sabine or whether that's not, but thank you very much for listening. I think, you know, there, there's a few insights there for people to think about. Yeah, wonderful. Yeah, thank you so much. And I think we kind of all catch ourselves with our negative self-talk, whether we are male or female. And I think quite often others actually don't see the negatives in us. They, it's just us actually criticizing ourselves. And I think it's so super important to actually, you know, not just the love relationships outside of your work, but also to, you know, take time out with friends and family uh, and have that, that sort of quality time um, because it just gives you that balance. You know, it's not just work, work, work. It's really important to kind of get out there. And obviously also I would say the other thing, this is what, what we talked about last time is actually cutting off the toxic relationships. And I know it's not always easy, but, those toxic relationships can really influence your your kind of energy and, and sort of drag you down. And if people don't believe in you, then obviously you don't want to really be, you know, uh, kind of around them. But it's not always, you know, can't always avoid those people. But if you can, <laughs> <laughs> that's my thing. So I like to refer to those sorts of people as energy vampires. So certainly, yeah, <laughs> I know what you're talking about. Absolutely. Sorry, I'm just toggling back to the slides because I want to introduce the next person. Thank you so much. Uh, do we have questions for Lynn? Potentially we have. Let me just check the chat. Um, uh, so Sarah says Lynn's words really touched a chord with me too. Thank you so much. Fantastic. Yeah. Also, Melissa says great insight. Thank you, Lynn. We're gen generally our worst enemy. Yeah, totally agree. Great. Okay. So um, any anyone wants to kind of just ask questions, you know, then you can just raise your hand and we'll unmute you. you of course, you can talk because it's, it's an interactive workshop. So absolutely feel free uh, to raise your hand and sort of, you know, share maybe your insights if you have any you know, want to add your, your thoughts to it as well. So make, so feel free to, to raise your hand. That's, this is the section where you can raise hands and sort of get uh, the mic. Okay, so um, not seeing any further questions for Lynn. So let's move on to um, Melissa. And Melissa is a confidence coach and she ignites the lives of women to create lasting change and reach their highest potential by developing a peak performance mindset in a way that's fun, honest, and enlightening. And she's going to talk about the three things you can do every day to feel more empowered at home, work, and in your relationships. So let's see, where is Melissa? Hello. Hello. Hey. For your video so I can get you on the screen. Or maybe let me sh stop sharing for a start. Um, and then. Ah, there we go. There we go. Oh, hello, everyone. Um, 
I'm so honoured to be a part of this community, as I'm sure everybody else in this panel expert is as well. And I want to share with you, um, I did say three tips, it's actually four tips. I'm going to have to speak very, very quickly, so you may have to watch the recording back to get all of the questions that I'm going to ask you for you to answer. Um, and for me, empowerment is so, so important because I work with a lot of people who are high achievers and you know, we're all on this because we're high achievers, we're leaders, we want to you know, create change, we want to cultivate something more than ourselves. However, what I find is that sometimes we let our own standards for ourselves drop and that can affect home life, work, business and relationships. So um, my four steps on defining your standards are this. So the first one is gaining clarity. So the first step is that you need to know what it is that you want to achieve. So generally we want to achieve everything. We know what the end goal is, but we don't know what the steps are in between that. But generally when we look at that in more detail, it's really impossible to set standards because we don't actually know what we want and what success will look like when we get there. So a few questions to ask yourself would be, what do I want to achieve? Uh, whom do I seek to become as a result of achieving this goal? Very, very important. So you have a sense of identity with that. What traits would I need to cultivate to achieve this goal? What new behaviors would I need to adopt? And how would I ideally like to live my life having achieved this goal? Now, this may be difficult for some people to answer. So what I kind of say is to close your eyes and imagine yourself as being limitless. So in other words, think about a goal and consider what it might be possible if there was no barriers or no limitations. So then ask yourself, what could you potentially achieve if you had no limitations? What could be possible? Because I feel, again, really going off what Lynn just said as well, we are our own worst enemy all the time. So we've got fantastic, great vision and passion, yet we keep ourselves small, generally because it's how we feel we may be judged and how we will come across from other people. So the second step for you is to assess what your current reality is and what your desired reality is. So your current reality is the life you're living in this moment and consider what kind of life that this is and what type of behaviors that define your actions and results right now. So what standards do I currently uphold? What standards do I have for myself in various situations? What standards do I have for roles that I play in my life? So roles may be a friend, a parent, a teacher, an employer, a leader, a sister, a brother, um, you know, a sexy soul for yourself, whatever your role is, and you'll have many roles, define what your standards are because they're probably going to be different in different situations. And then consider this for a moment. What standards do I have in those roles? And what goals do I want to achieve in each of those areas of my life? Because it's not just about you as a leader. It's not just about you as a parent or a teacher or a sister or a brother. This is your whole identity. And setting the standards for this is so so powerful because it can really get you from sort of here to really up here and this isn't just a one-time thing this is what we do all the time and especially how i love to work with people especially overachievers and people pleasers is the rituals that you partake in each of these roles will change as you grow um, as a person so with every role that you have you'll have a set of standards so you can actually ask yourself these questions so are these standards mine did I set these standards or are these standards from parents, the environment, what I've grown up in, what I've known in you know, my industry? Did, if I didn't set them, who set them for me and when? And why did I adopt these standards of my own? Now, it's not saying that it's not good having those standards, but sometimes stepping outside of that is a huge comfort zone um, or outside of our comfort zone. So really kind of seeing where you are right now to where you want to be is really good to be able to assess those standards. Um, step three is finding empower, <laughs> inspiring mentors. I'm going to have to do a plug for this Love and Portal because it's brilliant. If you don't have mentors in your life now, and it doesn't have to be people who you physically know, it could be people who have passed over, it could be people you aspire to be, people you read books, or someone that you actually just connect with. Having purpose and having them as your inspiration will help you raise your own personal standards. Just to give you um, an example, so I have a fabulous friend who is so health conscious, it literally makes me sick, but in a really I'm jealous way. And the way in which I see that is that she's active, she's fit, and she has such high standards for her health that she must uphold each and every day. So for me, what I do is I model myself on her as an inspiration. And this year I've lost me three stone purely through nutrition and following what her standards are. Now I'm probably never gonna be as health conscious as her, but from making that change in that one area of my life has 
like completely created a ripple effect through all the other areas of my life too. So finding a mentor for you that's inspiring is really, really key. And lastly, is to set your own clear standards. So what will I now believe about myself within this role? What will I now believe myself um, within this role? So like the mum, um, uh, the parent, the brother, the sister, the job. And um, how will I now behave while partaking this role? And when I partake in these roles, what does it mean to me? And what does life look like when I live in these roles each and every day? For me, doing this, defining what your standards are, even now in, on the 9th of September, do it now because I kid you not, by the time that the new year comes around, you're going to have a whole new set of standards and your life and your business and your relationships will have really taken a step in the direction that I think you want to be in. So that's me. Oh, I love that. And and again, you, you kind of just brought this 360 degrees, as I was saying in the beginning, you know, so, you know, don't don't wait until the new year to be, become a better, better self. Take this time now to really close out the, the, the year as best as possible. You st still have like four months to go. Um, and I love yeah. that. And, and even Claire saying great practical tips. Absolutely. I, I totally agree with that and very motivating Elaine said um, good and thought-provoking Rachel says will revisit my standards as I did this a while ago but need to do it again thanks Melissa uh, and fabulous question to ask uh, yourself from Susanna you can go really deep yes and what was the question again what are my standards I think yeah so um, so I'll share the questions because they're really, really good for us to go over. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Okay. Can you share the questions uh, as part of a yeah, email? Of course course I can. Can. Yeah, yeah, sure. I think Claire's asked a question. Different behaviours for different roles, though. Why do you say uh, do it differently for different, yeah, different roles? Different uh, behaviours for different roles. Oh, yeah, that's the question from Claire. Different behaviours for different roles, though. Why do you say um, do it differently for different roles? So I find that um, because we are so many different things, sometimes we can't be the same for all aspects of our life. So certain standards. So for me, I have certain standards for my parents, which is different to the standards that I have for my friends and in my relationship. And that is to ensure that my relationship is uh, on an even keel and it, we've got um, boundaries. So um, whereas I'm very open with my friends, I'm also very open with my parents, but there's boundaries there and having those behaviors set in place and agreements. Um, I was speaking to someone the other day who actually had KPIs for their relationships. Now that is a bit too far for me. Yeah. <laughs> um, having those different behaviors and actually defining it for yourself with those standards um, is really key because I found that I was living in my parents' uh, standards and they weren't where I wanted to be anymore. And asking those questions was really difficult and stepping outside of their standards and creating my own was when I really started to show up as I wanted to. So, um, so yeah, we revisit them every year. Um, we don't have KPIs just yet, but we revisit them every year. We see whether or not we need to change them and we're really open and honest with it. So, um, so it's really powerful to do. I like it. And it's kind of like, <sighs> KPI is a bit objective. I know it's a bit it's a bit much to think about KPIs in terms of relationship, but, but I know it's crazy. if you have kind of standards, you, you can actually talk openly about things and kind of be more objective rather than you know because some people get a bit um, tipsy. You know, let's not say tipsy. I don't want to say tipsy. Or they get a bit strange when you when you kind of give feedback and, and they're not open for feedback. So I think you can really create a great foundation for actually having those conversations. Uh, every so often. Um, also, yes, so Carol also says we women need to set high standards. I think also men, you know, I think it's it's both. Um, Paul loves tips as well. So great to have you, Paul, as, um, as a man in the group. Uh, Melissa expresses the vibration of confidence. Oh, that's a great comment. Uh, great. So, um, I actually have a slide with these four things, um, which I'm going to share quickly. We've got, or if, no, I did delete them. I thought I had those four, but what we'll do is, Melissa, maybe you can, you, we'll actually share, afterwards we'll share the replay, we'll share also a little gift from everyone, we'll, we'll have um, a little email coming out um, as well, so Melissa will actually share those questions with you. So let's go to... 
Elaine. So Elaine Hello. Uh, is a transformational specialist and she's empowering women to transform overwhelm and stress into authentic health and happiness and she's going to talk about stress proofing your energy five ways to keep your energy high and get uh, and get things done without going into overwhelm i look forward to that elaine so yeah, well, i'm just set my timer because i can talk forever about this but um yeah so in the portal melissa's already mentioned it um i've got a lot of information there about stress um, and stress affects all of us particularly when we want to move ahead and there's new things going on in in this time of year particularly in September we can get like loads of goals that we set for ourselves and then it's like oh my gosh I'm, I'm in that kind of stress and overwhelm state so what I'm going to talk about is probably nothing new that you've ever heard before but are you doing it these are the honest questions you want to ask yourself because if you are doing these things and reminding yourself about these things every day you're going to be in the best state of health that you can be so the work that I do as a life and wellness coach it's all about everything to do with the mind the body and the spirit because we're not one-dimensional beings we've got to really take care of ourselves in the best way that we can because the only thing we can control is our energy and how we see the world and how we show up to the world what gets us all stressed and and um overwhelmed is when we start to control everything that's outside of us so all that we can do as i say is to really just show up in the best state that we can for us so i've got five things to just go through that can affect our energy on a daily basis so the first thing is food and as simple as that sounds how good is what you put into your body so if you're filling yourself with sugar alcohol caffeine processed food what do you think the outcome of your energy is going to be now whatever you ate six to eight hours ago now is in your blood fueling the cells in your body to grow your hair grow your eyes fuel your brain and 20 percent of all the food that you eat is that energy is taken to fuel your brain so if you're not eating correctly you're not going to have the energy or the thinking power to to do what's right for you another one environment this is huge um and people have also alluded to this all the way through that we're talking about the people that you surround yourself with are as important to your environment as the four walls that you're sat in so if you're in an office uh, space that has artificial light gray walls no fresh air you're surrounded by people that you don't get on with how do you think that's going to impact your energy as well so it's really important that you know you might not be able to change where you're working but there's little things that you can bring to your environment that helps you feel in your best state so if i use myself as an example i haven't got many on today but i wear a lot of crystals i shove them down my bra they're in my pockets they're all over the place so i might put some crystals on my desk if i'm in an environment i don't necessarily feel energized by for you it might be a pot plant you know but also being around people or having conversations with people in your breaks that help bring up your energy a bit like melissa was saying just a moment ago having that environment of of the energy of people around you that is really conducive to make you feel good um sleep um again i'm talking on what carol talked about earlier it's so important for our well-being and if you're not getting enough sleep you're affecting your physical and your mental state so it's making sure that you are getting your seven to eight hours a night that you're not necessarily watching the tv or playing on your phone just before you nod off and then you're not getting a decent night's sleep so that is just as important as your environment and the food the next thing and I'm whizzing through these because I keep looking down at my timer um, is movement if you don't move your body our energy is stagnant and I'm saying this because I teach yoga and it's it's one of the many things that I do but it shifts energy just if you sat at a desk all day and you don't move your energy is stagnant so I'm sure you've all heard of the Pomodoro technique when you're working and you set a timer and, and it gives you that break. So you might work for 40 minutes and then you do something different. You can do the same thing with movement. Get up out of your chair. You know, you might want to dance around like a mad woman like I would, or you might just go and make yourself a cup of tea. But changing your physicality, moving your body is just as important. You know, even if you don't go to the gym there's ways that you can physically move your body just getting out into the fresh air walking around or even just stretching at your desk 
this is going to help move energy. And the final one, um, oh, so I'm getting, doing really well, getting up to the five minutes, is your mindset. Now, stress is not given to you. No one can give you stress. The only way you're going to get stress is the way you interpret a situation. You have the power to choose your mindset every minute of every day. It's not such an easy thing to do it every minute every day until you kind of get practiced into it. But even just first thing in the morning when you wake up, talking about like what Carol was saying, choose your mindset for the day. Your self-resilience is what's going to help you protect your energy to keep you coping with all the things that life and work and everything throws at you because it doesn't get any easier, even if you do the personal development, but we learn the tools to help us. Um, so very quickly, just to recap, we've, I've got food, environment, sleep, mindset, and movement. So those are my top five, although there's many, many more. But if you do all of those, you're going to be well on your way to protecting your energy and stress. Oh, thank you so much. And of course, this is all in the empowerment portal. In yes, the yes. Um, Sarah says, totally agree about the importance of nutrition, cutting out processed foods, sugar, and alcohol is a massive help mentally as well as physically. And uh, Carol says that she's got a friend who told, um, so told me he quit sugar three months ago and he feels like an 18 year old and he's in the late 50s. Yeah, I totally agree. Um, Rachel, I talk to people a lot about choosing your mindset every morning. You choose to go to work. So you may as well choose to enjoy it. Absolutely. <laughs> and what a difference it makes, you know, because, um, yeah, you, you have choices. And, and if you make that choice to be positive, you will get the positivity back. If you make the choice to be a negative, I'm sure you're going to get the negativity back. Just how many times have you been in a supermarket checkout? If you just smile and be, um, you know, polite to the pers person, the other person will actually be polite back uh so many times I've, I've done a little sort of little tests and and it always it's always uh correct it, you know it never proves me wrong elaine uh super elaine uh Susanne says love the reminder that you can bring things into your environment to improve it fabulous so i hope we didn't miss any questions thank you so much elaine i really appreciate you being here on the call and then we're going to go to the last but not least um, expert who is eagerly waiting it is amanda who's a leadership mindset strategist uh, and she is also a performance and career coach who helps people get to the next level via heart heart hard work and not hard work <laughs> so she's going to talk about energy management for high performing leaders and i'm super excited about that we had a couple of questions around those as well. Cool. Great. Thank you, Sabine. And um, I think a lot of what I'm going to say is going to really build on some of the stuff that Elaine just um, talked about. So I'm going to take, try and take away, try and edit as I go um, to do that. Before I start, though, um, I just really want to acknowledge all the people who are here with us tonight. Um, you know, I'm sure that a lot of the a lot of the women here are mums who are juggling left, right and centre, spinning plates and all of that. And I feel like I want to go out and high five you all. Well done. We're here. We made it through the summer. Um, so, yeah, I normally work with people who are in their what I would describe as their mid career. So sort of 35 to sort of 50, 55. And the reason why I'm attracted to working with those people is because I'm kind of like, I've, I've learned a lot of lessons from that period of my life. And um, the one thing that really, really strikes me is that there is just so much to do. There's work pressures, there's family commitments, there's caring responsibilities. And we have all of that going on. And we're leaders. We want to make a difference. So you've got this kind of conundrum of on the one hand, you've got so much to do and think about. And on the other hand, you're here for a reason, right? So for me, it's helping people handle that really well to make so that they can make a difference. Because what that actually means in reality is learning how to perform almost like to your one's own personal command and not wasting time on low energy stuff. So what I want to talk about in this section is 
taking that summer sense of relaxation that I really hope we've all got a bit of a grasp of still and moving forward into the autumn and the winter with um, uh, a slight change in mindset if you like it's a simple concept but it doesn't make it an easy concept to implement and the concept that I want to um, sort of float with you is to take ourselves perhaps away from that pure um, looking at our lives from a time, pure time management perspective and moving into more of an energy management perspective because energy is the currency of performance and just to sort of bring that home we'll use an analogy from from sporting world like athletes spend 90 percent of their time training in order to perform for 10 percent of their time you look in the business world and it's the absolute opposite business leaders are performing 90 percent of their time and only sort of 10 percent training if that and if we look at the training schedule of athletes, there is something in there which to people in business, we have a bit of a kind of weird reaction to. And what that is, is all those days and hours that they have scheduled in over their year, over their season, about rest and recuperation and renewal. Because a lot of the people who run businesses, who are pretty high up in businesses, high achievers, as uh, Melissa was talking about earlier, a lot of those people have got to where they are because they have worked damn hard. You know, they've put the hours in, they've, you know, done whatever it takes to make it work. And you get to a certain point, and that's great. That's got them to where they are. But what is going to take them to the next place, that place of you know, really high performance now that they have all these other things going on, now that they're in a serious leadership position, something's got to give. Now, the brain isn't a muscle, but it works in a very similar way. It works on sort of um, 90 to 120 minutes of focused, pure focus time of work. You know, it can push it for that amount of time and then it needs to rest and renew. And if we don't do that rest of a new piece, we can end up overstressing the brain and our performance drops off. I don't know if you've ever in a past life or know of a friend who might have done this, stayed up late at night sending emails or doing work and then looking at the next day and going, I really need to redo that. And what you can end up doing is overworking and, and making mistakes. And that's, that's in the low performance sector. So, and also we have this sort of, um, particularly for those high achievers, they often work in organizations where rest is not appreciated, um, it's considered unproductive time. We have cultural messages of uh, you know, being lazy dis and, and perhaps being, people being disengaged if they, they rest. And there's probably also some beliefs and some values that, that are those kind of switched and bitterness on the backside um, that have gone, we've taken too far. But the truth is, that we often have our most inspired, most creative, most innovative thinking when our brain is in its most relaxed state. Those times in the shower, those times out um, walking in the fields or running, when we are in this sort of primed relaxation state, the brain is in optimum performance time. And that is what we want to be aiming to get to. So if we want to take this summer relaxation, this sense of summer still with us into the autumn and winter, my suggestion, my invitation to you is to look at the four different sources of energy that you have available to you in your life and build those into your day. So I'm talking about obviously the physical energy that Elaine went into so beautifully earlier in details. I'm not going to cover that too much. The mental energy, the emotional energy, and also we are, I believe, spiritual beings, so the spiritual energy as well. So um, I've already mentioned sectioning off your day into, into like 90 to 120 minute things, uh, sections, and we need to put time in between those sections for no, not thinking, for switching the brain off and relaxing. Um, emo an emotional energy renewal might be uh, learning to manage our emotions more effectively so we're not drained by worry, anxiety, anger and that's quite a piece of work in itself but i highly recommend that if you're very if you find it very difficult to let go of strong emotions that you learn to do so not skipping over them but acknowledging them and then quickly working through them 
And finally, the spiritual and energy renewal um, is something that we can do on a daily basis. And there's a little bit of work that we might have to prepare for ourselves. I mean, there's lots of different ways that we can renew ourselves spiritually. But my favorite way of doing it personally and with my clients is to uncover and really, really connect in with our deepest, most important values. By bringing our values into our work and our private life, it can massively change the game of life. Um, it can revitalize us. It can get us clear on what's really important. It can be career changing kind of stuff. So those are my, um, that is my suggestion to you. That's my invitation to you is to think of your day, not as a, a series of time slots necessary, but in terms of energy management and looking to those four sources of energy to help renew and rest and put you in your brain into that high performance state. And that's me. I'm done. I've probably gone over by about three minutes. Awesome. Oh, everyone's saying brilliant, Amanda, energy management 101. We have a couple of questions and I think yeah. I'd love to kind of almost open this up to the whole panel after the next section, because this is going to be about imposter syndrome. So I'm going to, I'm going to probably all of you kind of muck in. What I'll do is I'll kind of just go to the next section uh, and then we'll open up again for a little panel and anyone else who has you know, questions for anyone, let's just put them all in the chat and then we'll be back uh, and opening up uh, again. So you guys can think about the imposter syndrome question um, because some of them are, some of the ladies are struggling and I think that's a brilliant question about how to deal with it. So um, in the meantime, I'm just going to go whiz through my last couple of bits uh, in the presentation, if I may. So I think I'm here. I'm back on screen, right? So fantastic. Um, so don't attempt to uh, answer the questions typing up. Uh, we'll be again getting you guys back on the mic. Uh, sorry, we have one more lady. Oh my gosh, we're almost out of time. <laughs> it's Alice. Alice, didn't didn't forget you. No, no, no. You're you're right, right here. Alice is going to speak about clarity of direction, and she's got the four key points about prioritization, strategic intent and unifying purpose and determination. And Alice is a leadership coach. So she actually spent all her life, adult life, developing and running high performing teams. So she's got an amazing amount of, um, uh, you know, 20 years of career behind her too. So let me just go and grab Alice. Uh, can we um, mute you? There we go. Can I hear you, Alice? Yes, I'm here. Yes. Fantastic. Sorry okay. about that. Ah, no, don't worry. Time don't flies, worry. isn't it? So we've got to keep it to, you know, to the... Don't, don't you worry. Four Sorry. minutes. <laughs> um, but I think the main thing is all the parts that the ladies have brought out so far are so critical. Um, so, you know, how you prepare yourself before you can even go to start doing any form of work or activity is critical. Um, so, and I guess that's really chiming with with some of the other pieces earlier is the clarity of direction um is very much if you don't know where you want to go how can you possibly get there uh and we were chatting i think amongst our, ourselves when we we're preparing for the webinar with regards to overload overwhelm you've got so many different tasks that are all coming in and unless you're crystal clear on where you're wanting to go um which comes back to melissa's piece about you know what does your future look like if you've done that work and done it really well, then you have a real pinpoint of where you're going to go. So I use the analogy of if you know you're going to go home, there might be 20 ways that you can get there, but you know exactly what your destination is. And then as tasks come in, then you're able to work out, right, does this really support what I'm wanting to do? Um, so as far as prioritization is concerned, you can then go, actually, what's absolutely imperative? What's a nice to have? and what seems like a good idea, but I could probably get away with not doing. And also what can you delegate? Uh, this is a great part of um, the strategic intent. So if both your team, be it at home with your family or in the workplace, know what you're trying to achieve, then it's so much easier for them to proactively look for how to help you. And similarly, when you're then trying to galvanize the team together, so that's the unifying purpose aspect, is what's going to make sure that you're all pushing your energy in the same direction. 
so you chatted earlier about potentially having toxic people around you or where you've got people who are sucking your energy up. I love that term of the energy vampire. Um, because if you know that you've done that values work at the start, you've been crystal clear on where you want to go. So you're arriving where you and your team, like I say, be it at home or at work, or if they overlap, then you know that you're all pushing towards the same goal. And hence you become stronger together than you are alone because you're all, you know, you're creating that momentum. Um, and finally is just how determined are you? How many of us have ever, you know, I had great aspirations of wanting to lose 15 kg at the start of the summer. I haven't done it because actually I was more determined to try and get my business going and I have other things. So where does, you know, the goals you're setting, where does it sit in the pecking order of everything else that you've got going on? And really, you know, we are an energy, we are a battery and you can only have so much energy in the battery. It's finite. So, you know, just as we were hearing from Amanda, you have to recharge. And also you, when you're looking at when you're prioritizing, where are you going to put your energy? So time, resource, emotional energy, mental energy. I'm gibberish by about, probably about now. <laughs> you know, definitely if I'm trying to write something, nine, 10 o'clock PM, it's over. Whereas if I go to bed early, and I'm afraid I, Sabine, also have those three o'clock moments, but I'm probably not as good and sharp as you are to put the phone away. I sometimes often spend a couple of hours doing emails. But half the problem with that is I feel wired then, crystal clear, but it's a disaster when you then need to go into your working day. So you also have to be quite strict on yourself. Um, and actually, I've used a diary in the past to look at where my energy flows during the day. Uh, and I just happen to be one of those crazy people that unfortunately mine is often in the middle of the night. <laughs> so not so good. And I would not recommend that to anyone. But knowing when your energy spikes are is brilliant for putting your hardest tasks in that time too. So, you know, that whole classic of look at when your best moments are and put your hardest bit. Eat the frog. I think, I don't know if how many of you guys have read that book about eating the frog first. You eat the frog that's going to be the hardest task of the day when you've got the most energy. So yeah, understanding your strategic intent, being able to unify everyone around you and being really clear on what are you determined to achieve and actually what are you talking about but aren't actually then taking action towards. That's probably my piece. Hopefully, oh, I've done 4.37. Sorry about that. Love it. <laughs> uh, yeah, I totally agree in terms of the energy. I mean, some days I'm good in the morning. Some days I'm better in the evenings. Uh, I don't know. I probably should have a little diary, but it's a, it's a great prompt. It's a great prompt. And, and it's very interesting that, you know, some people are actually more productive in the evenings, but then the working in day is like nine to five and everyone's expected to kind of be there in a time and, and do their best work in, in that time. So yeah, it's a, it's a difficult one, isn't it? <laughs> Uh, I know we have probably some more questions, definitely inspired, people very inspired, great to have you here, David, yes, and it's a great book that you just mentioned, absolutely, um, excellent information, fantastic, so um, thank you, this is where we end the part with the experts, but we're going to go back because we have some amazing questions coming in still, and I'm super excited about the um, uh, imposter syndrome myself. Um, so just going to sh share back and obviously I want to thank the whole, um, six ladies here, uh, the whole panel for, you know, the amazing discussions and, and of course, um, we kind of alluded to that, you know, all of, all of these ladies are in the portal as well, the empowerment portal. Um, and probably I'm just going to whisk through this because these were my afterthoughts in terms of what kind of daily challenges do we have and how can we truly enjoy life. This is, this is why we're doing this. This is why we're doing this webinar because we want to help you guys to actually really, you know, think about your challenges and taking them forward as not challenges, but, you know, looking at it more positively and thinking, okay, how can we manage our energy? How can we manage our relationship? How can we um, set standards? How can we move from here to there, you know, without hard work, but with hard work, okay? So, you know, it's about health, money, relationships, and career pressures, and 
this is why we actually created this empowerment portal because i really want people to have access to multiple experts and to be able to continue to develop to learn to connect and so let me just talk a little bit more about the empowerment portal because i want to give you guys the opportunity to you know stay connected with us and potentially even work with us on some of the aspects and this is where you choose which areas you want to work on so a for me it's about continuously reaching great for greatness in life and in business uh, as my brand already says it's about developing new skills improve relationships and develop health harmony and and live a purposeful life and not just live on the brink every single day and um you know you come home exhausted and you have no time for yourself you have no time for your family you know um and it happens so often I'm, I'm like that as well. I have two children and I have a full-time job and I have a business as well. So I know exactly what it is like and it's not easy. So this is why I had this epiphany. Like I know so many amazing experts. Why don't we get everyone together and sort of share their best content, make sure there is a portal where people could come to and sort of have those conversations where we are a community, where we can host things like this on a monthly or, or bi-monthly basis, where people have access to online resources, um where where people can actually get in contact with these guest experts that we like who we heard from today and have a call have that those coaching sessions and those one-to-ones and they can choose which areas they want to work on so so thank you very much here is uh, another uh, uh, a review of all our guest experts um we have about um just under 20 experts inside the portal so uh, again there are many many more and different areas that you know you can be kind of tapping in into in terms of what you want to develop and where your kind of weaknesses are or what you want to focus on and it's very very interactive so everyone's got like workbooks in there as well that you can print out you can do things in your own time you can also connect with these these ladies as well because they're doing calls as part of the packages of the, of the membership so this is how it looks so for example we have a vip bundle and you know we can see there are different areas we've got physical wellness so we've got an area where we have physical wellness information for you and videos and tools we have a mental wellness area which is really really big then of course we have a leadership toolkit so it depends on which level we have three levels which i explain in a minute this like for example we have advanced leadership toolkit where you actually get your some coaching and you get your advanced sort of uh, leadership level um, skill sets we also have career coaching in there and then also i teach um, business so i teach how to start your business how to grow your business you know if you are multi-passionate um, like me you want to start a business on the side or in the future or want to have a plan b then obviously this is what i teach uh, and you've got access as part of the portal so I'd like to ex extend uh, the invitation for those who want to take this to the next level, who want to stay connected, um, obviously to come and join the portal. We have three different memberships levels. So the basics is almost like um, a bit of, of everything, a little bit of everything, um, quite a DIY version, but obviously the pricing reflects that as well, or the, the investment reflects that. And then we have like a medium version where you have sort of a light sort of bundle of everything as well, and you have some access to experts. And then you have the VIP version, which I just mentioned. And on top of everything, and this is really, really fundamental, it's about us being a community. It's about being a community coming together and having regular conversations and where you can actually come ask questions or be part of something be part of this bigger vision so um, i'm not going to talk too much about the different bundles i'm just going to leave you with uh some information uh you can call me directly uh or you, you can you can have a, a call with one of our team members to actually go through what is the best bundle what is what what's included in which and you know what do you recommend uh and the pricing and so on so we'll just leave it at that um i'd like to close uh with my quote which i had in my book um i wrote when you release your magic you light the path for others 
Um, this is exactly my passion and sort of my vision for this. And, uh, and I invite you to come and join us. There is a link here uh, below where you can just sort of book, you can, you can book a call with me. I'll just share that in the chat as well. And so of course it will be in the email. Uh, if you are not sure, you know, how the portal works, if you would like to have a conversation with us, um, but obviously you have access to all our experts as part of being um, a member inside the portal. So thank you very much to everyone who's been with us to the end. Now we're going to open to all of the panel and the question, I'm gonna stop sharing now, is, um, and, pro, and of course we can take some more questions for those who wanna kind of stay a little bit longer, but if definitely the thing about the um, imposter syndrome, we'd like to kind of get some, some view around, you know, how do you deal with imposter syndrome? I'd, I'd like to um, address that if I can, Sabine. Um, I think for me, this is about a, a reframe. If we are experiencing imposter syndrome, then I think that what it's telling us is that we're kind of like at the edge of our comfort zones or right outside our comfort zones. And so from that perspective, I think it's kind of like, an, <laughs> it sounds really weird, but it's like, aha. Here I am, I'm outside my comfort zone, I'm doing stuff I haven't done before, um, I'm pushing it, I'm pushing my boundaries for me. And hey ho, the imposter syndrome's coming up saying you're gonna get found out, you're not good enough, or whatever your particular flavor of imposter syndrome says. And I think that that's okay, as long as we recognize it as, as it's a reflection of our success, of the fact that we are pushing boundaries, and we are, and there are women here on the call, I'm sure, who are pushing boundaries for women everywhere. I have worked with one man who had imposter syndrome, and that was slightly different, it, it, a different quality to it. But I think that, um, you know, we're in a generation that is pushing the boundaries, and we, we kind, of, kind of need to expect for weird stuff like imposter syndrome to come up and sort of welcome it as a signal that we're doing good. Okay, great stuff. Thank you. I'd like to also uh, contribute to uh, Sabine on this one. Um, I also think it's about, I mean, the great Anthony Robbins is a, a top in the personal development field, um, for those that don't know him, said that usually human beings have two great fears. One is they are not enough. And the other is if they are not enough, then they'll never be loved. And, you know, I think to some degree that's true for all of us. And if you're not feeling like you're enough, where does that feeling or where did that insight stem from? Usually it's from our childhood. And I can give you a specific example of something that happened to me. Um, my parents were arguing all the time. They were very, had a very volatile relationship. And my, my mother slammed the door went out and um, said she needed to call off and my father said to me run after her Lynn tell her to come back you know um, please just just get her to come back so I ran after my mum and I said to my mum please mum come back and she almost spat in my face and she she said I wish you'd never been born and you know what that really shocked me to the core and I have to say I've got a much better relationship with her now, but I looked back after I'd done my own inner work later on and realised that put a belief in my head that my mum didn't love me. And that belief that my mum didn't love me then made me think, well, if my mum doesn't love me, how can I love myself? And then from there, if I can't love myself, how can anybody else love me? And this is the baggage that we carry around with us without actually being aware that we're carrying it. So I feel that, you know, if you have this syndrome, where does that stem from? Is there a, an incident in your own life, usually from childhood, that, that sparks something off that you now can recognise? Wow, that's powerful. Yeah, thank you. And thank you for sharing your personal story and I think we all have some sort of story like this somewhere deep inside us. 
So I think that's all we got time for. Thank you. Melissa also typed up um, her ideas. You know what we'll do is we'll just email them out. I think people will be getting um, just an email with the recordings and on all these juicy bits uh, afterwards. So anyone else last, any last comments? Uh, otherwise, I'm going to close and like to thank all of you. Thank you the panel. Um, for being here and of course we're going to repeat this in a couple of weeks we'll have the next panel um, I've just left the um, the link there as well for um, connecting with me uh, around the portal so feel free to reach out get some information about that if you want to come and join us um, join the movement so thank you so much everyone and good night